Yo, this is the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick. This is Bubang. And we're here to talk about what we hope for for the Warriors in 2021. What, Bubang, is uh, on the top of your list of, of hopes, dreams, and aspirations? What's on your hope chest? I mean, it's if it's not James Wiseman, I don't know what it is, um, who it could possibly be. The rookie of the year race is between um, Dick Cheney's Halliburton versus... Um, <laughs> James Weissman, right? <laughs> also, it's we Wiseman. got a correction. It's, it's actually Wiseman now, right? We we got the correction. I'm sure. Yeah, I, uh, I heard it on uh, on another podcast. Yeah, Wiseman is a cool name, you know. Like, I don't know many people in the league that would have had that name. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there could there's like a like we can we can have some sort of um, nativity scene with just the one Wiseman, <laughs> and he's like super around tall. baby Jesus. Super tall with like a a hip young guy's afro. <laughs> yeah, it'll be awesome. There, yeah, there's 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 some sort of marketing ploy there. Um, if the Warriors dare to touch it, but yeah, I mean, I this is it's incredible. I mean, when you see him go for a long two or three, I mean, you feel like he's gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, I am cautiously optimistic. You know, that he's going to make it. The stroke looks good. I'm going to uh, probably repeat myself. When I do the game recaps and breakdowns, I always mention him. But he has a good stroke, but I wasn't sure if he could get that shot off quickly. In the Pistons game, even though he missed his two three-pointers, uh, he got like a, a pretty quick mid-range or deep two shot off and uh, he just swished it. You know, I thought he'd have to accelerate his motion, but... Yeah, he was fine. So I love watching that dude play. Let, let's talk about that for a second. Because if, if I were to just generalize what it would take for a big man to shoot a three, it's the stroke, right? Which he has. It's not a mechanical issue that he needs to fix. And the fact that he's 19 years old and played three games in college is, you know, I don't know who taught him how to shoot a three, but God bless that person. Um, the second is mental, right? He does not have any sort of mental issue when it comes to shooting a three. Um, there's no yips, there's no yups, there's no Markel Fultzism um, syndrome going on. Uh, but the third, I think, is related to what you're saying is is the release. Like, how fast does he actually need to get a shot off? Considering he's seven foot two. I mean, if you're thinking about Manute Bowl launching a catapult <laughs> from the three point line, his I mean, it took him like a three full seconds to launch that thing. Uh, I'm not sure if Weissman needs to learn how to shoot fast um, at that height. Um, Cause usually it's going to have, he's going to have a big man pulled out further away from the basket. Yeah. Or a small guy who can't get up to his yeah. uh, release point. Um, from what I've read, he was listed as seven one during the draft on ESPN. He's lifted at, listed at seven feet. So I don't know if that's like an official. Um, so he's, he's not seven two, but regardless, like it, it all really depends on what kind of shooter he's going to be. Right. Is he going to be like off the dribble or like, you know, kick it out and, and pop it. He's going to have to learn to shoot quickly. If he's going to do more, you know, pick and pops with Steph or whoever else is running point. Um, but uh, in terms of just being a dude who, you know, like you drive and kick and he's out there on the wing for a three. Yeah. He'll have no problem getting that shot off. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Just as long as he doesn't do a step back, just please don't incorporate a step back just do straight up and down three please i mean i think officially that guy has no reason to do a step back you know <laughs> like if somebody is on him that much then uh he could probably shoot over them pass or go around them you know um i mean that drive that drive that he did against the pistons uh the the one man coast to coast fast break i mean that reminded me of one of his off-season training clips there was one where he was like training with whoever those dudes who were like five nine or something you know and the then, guys that uh, run a gym in la the strength yeah. and conditioning coach that is a consultant in la type of guy yeah yeah um and uh you know he like crossed some dude over in one of these videos and then went by him and then dunked and then screamed uh i was like oh okay that, that was kind of it. Like that's like where you see the training come to pass, like where he took that, uh, that loose ball, drove it up with his right hand, crossed over with his left to the right side, and then used his right hand to come all the way back 
took the ball over the little man's head and uh, dunked it with his off hand. I'm like, what? So, um, you know, yeah, that's, it's it's one thing to do it at a $3,000 a month gym in Santa Monica. Um, but it's another thing to do at NBA game. I think what what hasn't been talked about enough is he finished with his offhand, with his opposite hand. Yeah, yeah, he, and he did a it, lot. He dribbled a lot, mostly with his opposite hand. Granted, because he, he takes long strides, not that many dribbles, but he never looked like he was out of control. He didn't look like JaVale McGee. Uh, you know, I mean, can you imagine Damian Jones dribbling up the court like a like a wild man? I can't even imagine Clay Thompson <laughs> dribbling up the court. <laughs> Let's be real here. I mean, if we talk about if when Clay comes back and Draymond comes back, Wiseman is still top five for me for taking it for being a point anything, to be honest. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I incredible. Mean, I don't even know it, physically how a seven foot tall player dribbles like that. Other other than Kevin Durant, obviously. Yeah, and it's interesting because you know, we see the comps and you saw the the videos people posted of David Robinson or Giannis. And if you could just imagine like uh, Anthony Davis, but out of those three guys, two of them had historic uh, growth spurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think, I think Wiseman was always, he, you know, he gradually got to seven feet. It wasn't like Anthony Davis or David Robinson. I mean, David Robinson went to Navy because there was no chance of him playing in the pros, you know, <laughs> he got a scholarship or whatever. I don't know how it works at Navy, but he went to Navy and then he shot up like six, seven, eight inches, you know, just like Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman and Anthony Davis. But with Wiseman, I, I don't know like how he got these dribbling skills. Maybe it's just how kids these days grow up, you know, always dribbling. I mean, I thought they grew up always dribbling in the nineties, right? That's how uh, Kevin Durant, coming up or, or, or Kevin Garnett, you know, had so many like guard skills, but it seems like everybody even more so does that now. Yeah, it is. It is very strange because usually the story is, you know, he's a kid's playing point guard as a freshman and then into sophomore year and then comes back in the summer and, and is suddenly six foot 11, seven foot tall, which is usually how you get uh, a unicorn uh, developed. But um, yeah. you know, maybe he just watched Steve Nash tapes growing up and was just dribbling uh, a tennis ball. Um, in between <laughs> games, who knows? Or maybe he was watching a, a Pistol Pete uh, uh, how to dribble videos um, on YouTube, <laughs> right? Transferred that. from um, from um, from tape from Hi Eight or whatever it is. What's whatever whatever they filmed <laughs> back then? Uh, but yeah, I'm excited about Wiseman. I mean, I mean, it's uh, if he wins Rookie of the Year. That would make up for this season if we obviously not win a championship, but I think that would be amazing. I also think obviously rookie of the year means shit. Um, if it if you look back at all the rookie of the years, yeah, Andrew Wiggins, uh, MCW, um, oh, Brogdon. It's just it's it's hard to to, to look at that list, um, but it is it would be pretty amazing to be so fresh off of uh, a bunch of championships and then um, get a rookie of the year candidate um yeah. But yeah i mean even if he doesn't win that means halliburton gets it which means you know good for the kings sure <laughs> i don't think it's anybody else this early in the game i don't think it's going to be um lamello for example and um, i don't know if anthony edwards is disappearing or it's just because nobody can watch timberwolves games unless you're paying for league pass um i mean i looked at the box score the other day i know you have been following uh, Anthony Edwards uh, box scores like, like, like a our hawk, man. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, tell us what, what, give us an Anthony Edwards update right now. Anthony Edwards is super talented. And when you see him on the court, you realize how he is legit big and he's going to get bigger and he's going to get even stronger. So he's going to be like a, a running back or a linebacker uh, at the uh, shooting guard spot. Um, but he but, also might retire yeah, I mean, from from basketball this next year and and go into the <laughs> NFL because football is his passion. Exactly, that's maybe also he just a possibility. Wants to be a, maybe he just wants to be a linebacker or a tight end. But he is, you know, like he's he can shoot, he can get to the basket, he can shoot deep, he can shoot mid range, and he'll be a, a great player. But I just don't know if he'll be able to bring the consistency um, in terms of rookie of the year. I find it doubtful that Edwards will have like a consistency throughout the season to get it. And I doubt that uh, um, 
you know, like in terms of like with him, then it just becomes about stats. If he wins rookie of the year, it'll be like one of those Tyreek Evans type deals. He just has like undeniably better stats than everybody else. (laughs) Yeah. But that means somebody has to actually look up the stats for a Timberwolves game uh, or pay attention. So that's going to be tough. (laughs) Yeah. You know, how, how good do you think Wiseman is compared to past warrior centers already? Let's over exaggerate. Let's, let's overthink. Okay. This. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we kind of went through this uh, a little bit before I think how good is he now or how good can he be? Yes. How, how good is he now? How I would count a little bit of potential too. Cause let's just assume, let's, let's assume that the way he's been playing is going to continue, but with larger numbers. Because he hasn't, I mean, he's made some rookie mistakes, but the stuff that he's done has been incredible. I, I, listen, like I think and you and I both know that the Warriors have had really bad centers throughout the years. And um, outside of Nate Thurman and Will Chamberlain, uh, I don't know if any of their centers have made the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I could be wrong, but no one, no one jumps out at me. I think he is the best center since Nate Thurmond. Um, and I think he could be their best center since, <laughs> since Wilt. And that's not saying like, it's ridiculous to say, but I just see the potential in what he can do both on offense and defense, not saying that he's as good as either of those guys yet, but just the pure ability and the temperament. And if he's brought along correctly, we're not going to see it now. He's, you know, we'll see it in a couple of years, like how him, him really reaching like the, uh, the apex of, of the position uh, currently. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's better than <laughs> JB Carroll. Uh, he'll be better than Bogut ultimately. And uh, yeah, that, that's. I mean, as somebody who was at Hershey in Hershey, Pennsylvania during Wilt's hundred point game um, and who was there, <laughs> Uh, when Robert Parrish got traded. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say he might be the best warrior center ever, but um, but maybe we can just say that knowing that <laughs> uh, new warrior fans don't really give a shit about uh, one and a half years of Robert Parrish and Wilt Chamberlain, who mostly played for the Philadelphia Warriors, and just say he he might be the best modern Warriors player uh, of all time if we just player? forget history. Um, I do know... What's that? Modern Warriors player? Whoa, center, center. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. That would be awesome, though. Great. I would hope that happens. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with you. I think there's no question about that because we've named quite a few of the Warriors centers of the modern era and whatever it is we're calling the modern era, <laughs> and um, he has potential to be way better than than all of them. Yeah, I mean, asterisk one is if you if you think Chris Webber is a, can be a center, and asterisk two is if you think he's going to get in the Hall of Fame. Um, but that's that's a side conversation. Um, I'll, I, I do know that uh, my biggest disappointment of not having fans in the stadium is not being able to to wait in line and get a James Wiseman bobblehead uh, during James Wiseman bobblehead night. You're listening to the Oakland Warriors podcast. Do you know Oakland Warriors is a website too? OaklandWarriors.com offers a collection of Warriors t-shirts that are comfy, classy, and cool. Fit for a real Warriors fan like you. Forget basic tees and boring designs. With Oakland Warriors, you can show your team pride with those in the know. I have a shirt from OaklandWarriors.com. It's comfy and soft, and it reps the dubs in a low-key but fun way. Don't believe me? Check out OaklandWarriors.com and use the code PODCAST at checkout for a 10% discount. Let's talk about Draymond returning. I don't think people have stressed that enough. The importance. Future Hall of Famer. Actually, do you think he's a future Hall of Famer? Yes. As long as he finishes reasonably well, you know, and I think he can, but... When he is going to be up for the Hall of Fame, there's going to be a lot of recency bias, you know? People are going to look at him and be like, oh, you know, look, he only had one defensive player of the year. He only averaged this and, you know, like blah, blah, blah. But it's fascinating to me that it hopefully history remembers that this Warriors dynasty had two guys who completely changed like 
eat like their side of the ball or what they specialize in, right? Curry changed the offensive side and Draymond changed the defensive side because you see so many copycats in the league based on them, based on what they did, right? And the reason why, you know, Draymond, he's getting old, he's only 6'6", so he's gotten beaten up over the years. And then the 2019-2020 the season, he just kind of mailed it in, which is understandable after going to the finals five years in a row. But if he's lost a step, it's also because there are other dudes who are 6'6", who have imitated what he's done to get in the league and have staying power. And maybe they're younger and maybe, um, you know, whatever. But uh, I would think so. I would think so, you know. And then when it's all said and done, he might get in for, well, I guess he's not going to be like a a, a sideline or like a, a game broadcaster. He'll just be, can you get in the Hall of Fame for being like a, a studio studio broadcaster? You like can, a, but you have to I mean you have to be pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean the entire TNT. I mean, wh- whoever's not already in in the Hall of Fame will get in the Hall of Fame. Kenny right? Smith, the TNT broadcast. Yeah, Kenny <laughs> Smith and uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Ernie Johnson. Yeah, Ernie Johnson. That's right. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think uh, Draymond will get into the Hall. I, I think the, he should. The, the way to figure this out is is you we always you have to compare player comps to see who's gotten in or not right and everyone brings up Mitch Richmond as sort of the, the the bar to get in so what players in the past have gotten in that you would comp them with about being in or out the it's hard to find a comp for him in the past right like if you look at the championship teams like '90s Bulls '80s Showtime Lakers um, Celtics the third or fourth best player. Um, is in the Hall of Fame, or the third best yeah. player is in the Hall of Fame, not the fourth. I mean, like obviously, one of the comps is Rodman. So Rodman's in the Hall. I think that's a good comp. I think. I mean, but the thing about Dennis Rodman is he has a bunch of records for rebounds. Like he actually is in the record books, right? For for rebounds, and so it definitely is a comp in, in terms of the defensive end. But for for having for being one a player with one specific just statistical anomaly anomaly like rebounds it makes sense except when you look at um draymond's numbers it's like nine eight nine (laughs) yeah but i'll say this i you know like remembering rodman playing for the pistons and then the bulls uh he got a lot of records but you know like i don't want to say he was hunting numbers or anything like that but he was uh, was. we saw saw the documentaries right okay (laughs) um so but when you look at Draymond, he also did other things on on offense. He was more of an offensive player than Rodman ever was, and he wasn't hunting numbers. Those things aren't going to show up when they look at his stats and compare them to other Hall of Famers and other players of his era. And uh, but you know that's that's what what I think and how I think of Draymond compared to Dennis Rodman. And um, who else is there? Uh, and in terms of being like a third best player, do you think he's as important as James Worthy was to the Showtime Lakers? Yeah, I think I think if you look at his place um, on the championship Warriors teams as the third third best player, um, also his defensive player of the year um, award, and then you you factor in the three championships, um, I think that sort of gets you close, right? But I think what pushes you over would be the numbers. And so what we have to rely on is the voters looking at his place in history in terms of changing the game. Like that's what's going to be it. It's going to say because of his position playing a small ball five and what it led to, um, that's going to have to be the reason why he should get in because he, his, his, There is no comp before he created his own comp. And the reason that's made it more difficult is there hasn't been anybody after him. um, That's sort of been the new Draymond, which is also very difficult. So we're going to have to rely on, on the voters thinking of him in, in that capacity. Exactly. Cause if you think of all the players that came before him who were undersized, nobody could do what he did on both ends of the, of the court. I mean, it's know? Charles Barkley is the closest in terms of body type, right? Right. Man, Barkley was good. 
I, I do think people forget how Charles, how good Charles Barkley was. I mean, that guy was the best power forward. I think he was better than Carl Malone. And then until Tim Duncan came along. Yeah, he was six. He's six six, two hundred fifty pounds. It's closer to six four and a half, I think. <laughs> but if you look, I mean, if you look at Charles Barkley's um, stats, I mean, his awards and everything, you know, MVP nineteen ninety three. Um, 11 time all-star all-star game MVP first team all NBA five times second team all NBA five times yeah I mean you would have to you'd have to weigh in the fact that um, Draymond has three championships and so you can't sit here and say championships don't matter um, player stats matter uh, for the Hall of Fame but then sort of turn it around and say only championships matter right I think I think for everything but the Hall of Fame, it's all about um, championships and numbers, right? It's just, it's a very weird thing. Like we think of the success of players all around championships, but then when you go to the Hall of Fame, everyone's like nitpicking all of the the highlights and awards and, and stats and championships don't play a bigger a role, right? Like, like, do you think Robert Ori should be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. I, I mean, always like to think about that. Obviously, we talk, uh, when they talk about championships, you're talking about a guy but guys who uh, and how much they affected those teams and how important they were to those teams. But uh, yeah, Robert Ory, Steve Kerr, right? like all those guys who uh, moved around and, and, and picked up uh, titles contributing, but they weren't leading those teams. So. Do, you, do you know how many titles Robert Ory has? I, I totally uh, forgot. I look it up. I did. It's like eight. So how many, let's just say, let's just say you were the fifth best player or sixth best player on a championship team. But you won. He won seven, by the way. Yeah. How many? How many do you need to win before you get into the Hall of Fame? Ten. Like, just look at Robert Ory. I would say it should be six. <laughs> if you win six championships, you should automatically get in. So you would be okay with Robert Ory being in the Hall of Fame right now? I guess. I guess. While I'm saying that, I also feel regretful because if Patrick McCaw gets three more <laughs> championships, then he's in the Hall of Fame. But I mean, I would exactly. totally be fine with the Robert Ory. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, maybe not a first ballot, but you know, the person that lingers, like Mark Jackson is still on the ballot. Yeah. I don't think Robert, I personally do not want Robert Horry in the, in the Hall of Fame uh, just for being like a, a, a complimentary role player. And he was memorable in each of those teams. But like, yeah, he I, hit big shots. He shot. watched all those games and he, yeah. he literally was a big deal in all of those championship runs. Yeah, I mean, because you kind of have to be contributing <laughs> a little bit, you know, to each team. But, you know, like, is, okay, let me think. Seven times, though. I mean, you have to be contributing. But, like, to do it seven times for seven championships? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just my personal take. I don't I don't think, um, to me, that's just weighing the titles too much, you know? Too he, much. He was a guy that uh, was in the right place at the right times and contributed greatly, but he wasn't like a star player on any of those teams. It's, yeah, I mean, we could do a whole podcast of Chris Webber versus Robert Ory in the Hall of Fame, I feel like. Well, yeah. Which exactly. five people will want to listen to? <laughs> Robert Ory being the only, only one of those two. <laughs> All right. That takes us to the end of another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and check us out at oaklandwarriors.com. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time and go Dubs. Go Dubs.